So we have seen that Haskell supports higher order functions, functions that take other functions as arguments and apply them to yet another argument. In the context of lists, map and filter are the two most important higher order functions that one can use. So to introduce map, let's look at two functions we have seen before. The first function is one that converts an entire string into uppercase. So this function is defined inductively using the base function capitalized, which converts a single letter to uppercase. So to uppercase of the empty string is the empty string. And if we have a non-empty string, then we capitalize the first letter and then recursively uppercase the rest. Another function which we have seen is one which squares all the elements of a list of integers. So the square of an empty list is an empty list. And if we have a non-empty list, we square the first number and then recursively square the rest. So in both of these functions, we are applying a given function to each element of the list. In the first case, we are capitalizing every character in the string. In the second case, we are squaring every number in the given list. So this is what the built-in function map does. So map, in general, takes a function f and applies it to every element of the list. So if we have a list x0 to xk, then x0 will be replaced by f of x0 and so on. So we will have this kind of function which takes each element and just applies the function one element at a time. So this produces a new list of exactly the same length as the old list in which each xi is replaced by f of xi. So it maps the function to the list. So here is an example. Remember we saw last time that if you take an operator like plus, then you can make it a function by using the round bracket. And therefore if I have plus applied to n and m, then the function with the one argument consumed plus n actually adds n to every element that it is applied to. So now if we take the function plus 3, it adds 3 to whatever it's applied to. So if I map this onto this list, I get plus 3 plus 2 which is 5, 6 plus 3 is 9 and 8 plus 3 is 11. So this is one uh, easy example of map. Here is a similar one using multiplication. So now we have 2 times 2 is 4, 6 times 2 is 12, 8 times 2 is 16. So here is a slightly more involved example. Supposing we have a list of lists. So say we have a list consisting of say 1, 3, and then 5, and then maybe the empty list. So what we want to do is we want to compute the sum of the lengths of these lists. So the sum of this, the length of this list is 2, the length of this list is 1, the length of this list is 0. So for this, we want a function that will return 3, this 2 plus 1 plus 0. So it's not the length of the whole list, but the length of the inner list. So we have a list of any type, contain um, a list of lists of any type, and we want to return an integer. And here's the usual inductive definition. Right? We say that the sum of the lengths of the empty list of lists is 0, because there are no lists inside. And if I have a non-empty collection of lists, then I compute the length of the first one, and then inductively compute the rest. So this is a traditional inductive or recursive definition of this function. Now, on the other hand, what we can do is we can use map. So we say, OK, take the list and apply length to each one of them. So that's just map. Right? So this takes, for example, in the list that we had seen earlier. So the effect of map is to replace this by 2, this by 1, and this by 0. So now we have this new list, which is after doing map length of L. And then the built-in function sum adds up all of these things. So if I apply sum of this, I will get 2 plus 1 plus 0, which is 3. Okay. So some length can now be succinctly described in terms of map and sum rather than writing out an inductive definition like this. So the function map itself can be defined inductively pretty much the way we have been doing the specific cases. So if we map f to the empty list, then we get the empty list. If we map f to a non-empty list, then we apply f to the first element of the list and recursively apply f to all the other elements. So what is the type of map? So map takes, of course, as input some list. So, so this is a list of some type A. And now this is a function that operates on elements of this list. So this function must start with an input A, but it can produce an output of any type. So it will be in general of type A to B. 
and the outcome of taking a list of A and applying a function that goes from A to B is of course to produce a list of B's. So if we ask a type of map, it will say give me a function from some A to some B, give me a list which is compatible with the input type of this function because I want to apply it to each element of this list and it will in turn produce a list which is of the output type of the function. Right? So map takes a function from A to B, it takes a list of type A and it produces a list of type B. So map is one important higher order function. Now let's look at another higher order function which involves selecting elements in the list. So here's a specific example. Supposing we have a list of integers and we want to select from this list of integers those that are even. So an inductive definition would say that if I have the empty list of integers, then I get the empty list of integers. If I have a non-empty list of integers, then I have to decide whether to include the first element or not. So I have a function here which checks whether a number is even. It just checks that the remainder of x divided by 2 is 0. So that's the definition of even. So if x is even, then include x and continue extracting the even numbers from the rest. Otherwise, x is odd, so exclude it and just go to the rest. Okay? So this is again a traditional recursive definition of this. But we would like to do this in general. So here it says we want to select all the even numbers. In general, we may have some other property which is true and false of some elements and pick out all those elements for which the property is true. So this is called filtering. So in filtering, we take a property P. So a property P is a function that takes a type and maps it to a Boolean value. So it takes, say, integers and decides whether they're even or not. It might take uh, letters, characters, and decide whether they are vowels or not, for example. So filter takes a property and a list, and it remove, extracts exactly those items from the list that satisfy the property. So filter takes P and if, if I want to filter an empty list with the property P, I get nothing because no elements are there to satisfy the property. If I have a non-empty list, then I check the property on the first element. If it is true, I include the first element and continue. Otherwise, I exclude. So in our previous case, the property was is even, but this is a generalization of that. So as we said, a property is just something which takes the type of the underlying list and decides whether or not each element satisfies the property. So it takes a function which maps the type A to bool. It takes an input list and produces an output list which is a subset of the or sub list of the input list. So it's of the same type. It's not like map which produces a new list which is the result of transforming the elements to a function. So in map, each element is transformed by a function from A to B. So you get a list of Bs. In filter, you're not transforming anything. You're merely selecting a sublist. So the output list and the input list have the same type. Of course, it is possible that none of the elements in the list satisfy P, in which case the output list may be empty, but it will still be of the same type. So if we go back to our function even only, then the property in this case is the function is even, which we wrote before. So is even is, remember, it takes integers and produces booleans. It just checks whether the remainder is 0 when divided by 2. So if I filter a list given this function, then I will extract exactly the even numbers from the list. So this is a much more succinct way of writing the same function. So very often map and filter occur in conjunctions. So very often what we want to do is to take a given list, extract some elements from that list which satisfy a given property, and then transform those elements to some new elements. So here is an example. Supposing we want to extract all the vowels, so this is a filter, and then we want to capitalize these letters, so that's a map. So filter extracts the vowels, and map capitalizes them. So we have first a filter function called isVowel, similar to isEven, which just checks whether the character is an A, E, I, O, or U. So we first apply filter to the list with this vowel as a property. This will re result in a list which has exactly those characters which are vowels in the original list. And then we use our earlier function to uppercase, which capitalizes every element in a string, to apply to this list which contains the vowels. Right? So filter followed by map is a very common 
form that we will find in many functions that we use. So here is another simple example of filter and map. Supposing we want to square all the even numbers. So we first filter the list by getting only the even numbers out of them. And then we map the square function to this list. So this will square each individual element of that list and give us the squares of all the even numbers. So if we have list 1, 2, 6, 9, 11, 14, then first filter will give us that this, this and this are excluded. So I'll get 2, 6 and 14 and then map will give me 4, 36 and whatever this is, 196. So to summarize, map and filter are extremely useful higher order functions on this. So map takes a function and a list and applies the function to each element of the list. Whereas filter takes a property that evaluates to true or false and extracts elements from a list that match the property, that is those elements for which the property is true. And we often use these in combination, so to extract a sublist and then apply a function to that list.